I recently got a notification from Yegi.com, which is how I often find out about new 3D models. I have a kind of notification list set up there, and it'll send me an email whenever something to do with Java is posted on any of a number of 3D model sites. In this case, it was something from CG Trader here. You can see this is a cartoony statue of Leia strangling Jabba, which I was very interested in. So I went ahead and bought it from the designer Marcelo first and opened it up in my slicer. And I was pretty surprised to see how large it was. It was looking like it would be maybe eight or nine inches tall if you include Leia and almost a foot long from tail to head on Java. So I decided to print Java in traditional FDM 3D printing using filament and then do Leia because she's smaller and more detailed with resin printing. Here I am adding some support material and basically I just printed it in PLA filament on my Creality CR10 S4. I'm using this yellow filament because I have quite a bit of it left over and I don't really know what to do with it. So I decided I would use it in cases where I'm going to be painting it anyway. I used a bit more infill than was strictly necessary, but I think it gave the figure a bit more heft than otherwise might be the case. So it's not really a bad thing. Ooh, this looks a little painful. Sorry about that, Java. To ensure that we got the best detail possible, I used the finest layer height I could for this printer, which is 0.1 millimeters. And that meant it did take quite a while to finish printing 54 hours and 19 minutes. Unfortunately, the creator of this model didn't have one of Java just all in one piece. That would have been better for my large printer, but it's not a big deal. I can just super glue them together like this. I will be going in later and filling in the gap between the body and the tail with a little bit of putty though. As I mentioned, I decided to do Leia in resin. So here are some of her parts laid out on the build plate of my Elegoo Mars 2 Pro printer. Ah, that's a little scary. I did have a couple of problems. You can see here, one leg and her head actually failed to print properly. I think I just didn't support them properly. And so I had to redo them. And beyond that, I also had to clean out the tank and get rid of those little hardened pancakes of resin that were left behind by the failed parts. This is one part of resin 3D printing that I'm not crazy about. Here we have Leia's parts that I cleaned in alcohol and then cured in UV light. I also did a little bit of sanding and filing to try and make the pieces fit together a little bit better, although they still didn't quite fit together in every case. So for example, her torso here doesn't quite fit on there entirely well. I think it's just that uh, the print is slightly misshapen. So I'm gonna have to come back in and fill that in with a little putty. There's also a little bit of scarring on the back of some of the pieces from the support material, but we can hopefully take care of that in the finishing stage. So I just went ahead and super glued them all together along with a couple of my fingers. And once they were all assembled, I decided to go ahead and try and test fit them on the Java, which is where I ran into a little bit of an issue. The first problem was that his tongue, which I had resin printed, didn't want to fit into his mouth. So I had to do some sanding and filing of that to finally get it in there. But that wasn't a major problem. A bigger issue was that once I actually had Leia glued together, it seemed as though her parts didn't want to quite mesh with Jabba's here. Her legs didn't quite fit into the spaces on his back where they're supposed to go. And also the chains, which are kind of supposed to exactly fit the chains that are molded onto Jabba, would not reach. But it occurred to me that because Jabba was printed with PLA filament, all I would have to do would be to take a heat gun, heat his back up, and then press Leia into the indentations. And hopefully that would melt them enough that they would sort of form around her feet and allow her to fit on there. And that actually worked pretty well. So next I used some Tamiya white putty to fill in some of these gaps. And I used my universal tool, otherwise known as a toothpick, to fill it in there and just kind of smoothed it out with my fingers once it was on. Then I did the same thing with Leia as well. The worst part seemed to be around her waist here, as I mentioned earlier, and also on her head, the part where her ponytail and sort of headpiece meet her head stood out kind of awkwardly, so I did fill those in as well. She also had a little scarring from the support material on her hair here, as you can see, so I tried just wiping the putty over her head like this, and it actually, I think, turned out pretty well, filled those in 
quite easily. Next, it was time to glue her to Jabba's back. Some people would probably say that it would be better to paint these separately, and there are arguments to be made in both ways, but I decided to go ahead and put her on there. I had already, of course, uh, softened his back up with the heat gun, so they should fit together pretty well, but I did have one little problem while I was trying to mesh up the chains together here. <laughs> but nothing a little super glue won't fix. Next, I wanted to prime it with some white paint. I like to do this because it gives it a nice uniform color to start with and also helps the paint stick. And there we go. This was a little bit more difficult than usual because it's so cold here at the moment, sub-zero temperatures, and uh, I wasn't sure if the spray paint would even work properly. In fact, I did have to use my heat gun on it to help it dry a little bit. So we're going to move on to painting next, but before we do that, I want to tell you about today's sponsor. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes on a wide variety of topics, including 3D printing, art and design, and music. There are no ads, and they're launching new premium classes all the time, so you're sure to find something that interests you. And it's less than $10 a month with an annual subscription. 2020 may not have been the best year for most of us, but one thing we can say is that a lot of us do have more free time than we used to, and learning something new is a pretty good way to spend that time. Recently, I've been taking the class Short Films Tell Stories with Stop Motion by Pez. I found his approach to filmmaking fascinating, and I'd like to experiment more with stop motion in the future. The first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link in the video description will get a free trial of premium membership so you can explore your creativity. Speaking of creativity, one thing I like about painting is that you can feel free to get creative with it. I wasn't sure what kind of a style I was going to use in this case, as a matter of fact, until I started painting. A lot of times I like to just get some color on the model and see where it takes me. I find that the first coat or so always looks pretty terrible. It looks like a preschooler's art project, but on the other hand, it kind of frees you up from having to worry about where exactly everything goes and just, you know, get some color on there and see how it looks. When I paint Java, I usually like to use an orange and green color scheme because it's the most like what we saw in Return of the Jedi as opposed to some of the beige and green or all green color schemes we've seen in later things. For both the green and the orange, I added a bit of brown to kind of darken them down a little bit. And then I would be able to go in and uh, highlight it more easily that way without making it too bright. And here we're finally starting to get decent coverage, so I'm starting to work on trying to blend the orange into the green, which can be a little challenging sometimes. It's basically just a matter of blending the two colors together gradually. Once I had the base color down, I went back and added a little yellow to the color and dry brushed that on. So I got rid of most of the paint on the brush and just sort of drew the brush over the surface so that it would pick up the raised portions and bring out some of that detail and the wrinkles in his skin and so forth. But I think relying only on dry brushing often doesn't look that great. It can look a little chalky and indiscriminate. So I go in so oftentimes with a fine detail brush and kind of paint on the highlights as well. And I may make several passes at this, adding more yellow or more white, depending on what the color is, to lighten it up until I've got a nice complex color. And of course, I use pretty much the same approach with the green as well. When I'm doing eyes, I often like to fill them in with dark brown first, just to kind of give them more definition around the outside. And then I'll go in with some white or reddish orange in Java's case. I like to use washes to accentuate the shadows in places like the nostrils and other parts that should be in shadow. That can either just be watered down black or brown paint, or some of the paint sets like mine have dedicated washes that are specifically made for this. For the tongue, I started with kind of a reddish brown and then went over that with increasingly lighter shades of pink. Jabba's eyes are pretty important to his character, but I wasn't sure how much detail I should really try and put into these. His eyes on the puppet itself are very complex, but trying to recreate that can be really difficult. And also, I didn't think it was necessarily appropriate for a cartoony character like this. So I decided to go with something a little simpler by uh, shading kind of the, the outer edges there with some wash and then using some orange highlights on the part around the iris. And I'm pretty happy with how they turned out in the end. 
I basically finished Java entirely before I went on to Leia. I started with some panned flesh color, but it was obviously much too dark for her once I got it on there. So I went back and added some white to lighten it up. I found that dark brown works as a, an undercoat for gold pretty well, so I went and colored all of her metal pieces dark brown first before I went and used a metallic gold paint on it. With pretty much all of these colors, if you just put one layer on or even just one color on, it's not going to look very good. You need to go back and add some shading, add some highlights, make it a more complex and realistic color before it's actually going to look decent. And, you know, obviously this is not looking decent yet, but it'll get there. Here you can see what a difference a simple wash will make in just bringing out the details of the sculpt. I would say Leia's face is probably the hardest part of this one to paint, and I'm still not entirely satisfied with it. But I went through and put some dark brown in her eyes and mouth and eyebrows as well, and then sort of went back in and tried to refine that. This is not easy under the best of circumstances, and trying to do it on camera is also <laughs> uh, quite challenging, I found. So you'll have to forgive me if this uh, looks a little clumsy here. I did go in and refine this a little bit later on and also added some pink for her lips. And I also added some gloss onto her eyes and lips as well. And I did the same for Jabba's tongue and his eyes. I wasn't entirely sure if I should do this, but once it dried, it definitely did add something to Jabba in particular. And with that, we were pretty much all done. I say pretty much because I like my statues to have bases and this one doesn't have one. Now you may recall that when I 3D printed the Ula statue a while back, I designed a base in Fusion 360, and I thought I could probably just use that base again, but resized and reshapen, I guess you'd say. You can, of course, with 3D printing, not only resize things, but also resize them just along certain axes so that you can make them be squished in one direction or the other. I did that in this case to make it more of an oval shape, and I think that actually worked quite well for this statue. I just printed that in filament and then primed and sanded it, primed it and sanded it again, and then painted it black. And I think it worked pretty well. I just used some five minute epoxy to attach the figure to the base. I like epoxy in this case because it fills the gaps and it's also very strong. Obviously I haven't painted the bottom at all, but that's okay because we're just going to be gluing this onto the base and you won't be able to see it. And here's the finished product. And I'll have to say I'm really happy with how this turned out overall. It's actually pretty impressive that you can see something like this on the internet, download the designs for it, and in my case, maybe, I don't know, three days later, have something like this, you know, completely finished in your home. It does kind of feel like the future in a way, although there's a lot of manual steps involved, of course. It's not just pressing a button, but still, uh, compared to the old days when you had to buy model kits through the mail or something like that, uh, it's definitely an improvement. And when you think about how much a collectibles company would charge for a statue like this, there's really no comparison. I think, including the cost of the 3D model and all of my materials, it was probably around... 20 to 25 dollars. So if you want to check out this model, the link to it on CG Trader is in the video description. My thanks go out to Skillshare for sponsoring this episode and also to my patrons who are supporting me on Patreon, including these Palace VIPs right here and especially Angelica Brady. Thanks very much for your support. If you'd like to support me on Patreon, you can go to the link in the video description and find out more. There's a variety of perks such as getting your name in my videos, early access to videos, and behind the scenes posts. Thanks very much for watching.